we want to talk about selection of appropriate transformation. A choice of a transformation for a variable is often called the choice of metric um, for that variable. So the effect of a metric of or transformation on the um, shape of an experimental design is important. One may obtain a very balanced or unbalanced arrangement depending on the theoretical distribution. This is the part I was telling you, if we have like Poisson distribution, if we have binomial distribution. So depending on theoretical distribution of the observa observations, experimenters would choose the appropriate transformation. For example, look at here. If observation follow the Poisson distribution, I wrote down that where can you can find out the um, more information like detail about the Poisson distribution. Um, for example, the blood cell counts that we would have, right? And then you would use the square root transformation. What does it mean? We would say like this Y star that you see is the, like the transform um, after we had the transformation. Like um, you would say, for example, uh, when the square root transformation is going to be like a square root of the y, right? And so here I have y equal to x beta plus epsilon. If we go with this one, we would write down y square, um, a square root, right? Yeah, but y square root is going to be equal to the x beta plus beta plus epsilon. And sometimes you can see that they would use the one plus y. It depends on the when you which one is going to be a better match for your um, distribution uh, when you are looking at it. If observation follow the log normal distribution, log normal distribution is one of the distribution that we would use. Um, for example, for the lifetime of the um, let's say your laptop, if you want to find out the distribution of the lifetime of your laptop for, or computer, we would go with a log normal distribution. It's a continuous one. It's one of the continuous distribution that we have. And when I say continuous, it means that the main variable that we are talking, the lifetime is, it has, it's like it has interval, right? So it's uh, continuous. So, uh, and you can look at it in chapter five of the CSU 220. Then we'd use uh, logarithmic transformation, like this one. And I wrote down on the board before as well. For binomial data expressed as fraction, uh, like um, data on proportion of pass fail from quality control chart or the records that we would have, then we would use the arcsin transformation. It's like that, the equation that we would use in a sort of y here, we would write down like arcsin of the, um, like a square root of the y. So that's the, that's just some examples. We have, we can have many examples. The common transformation, as I said, is like that we would use the, it's similar to the power transformation. So I could, we would use the power transformers. Look at here, logarithm of y, one over y and the square root of y. Example, suppose in an experiment, particle size is measured, Normal linear theory may apply to particle diameter or radius, but experimenter may measure area of particle by, uh, let's say, microscopy or weight um, particles. Normal linear theory does not necessarily apply to the like y square or like the area that you would have for your um, particle, right? It depends on how would you consider it when you wanna, um, uh, like what's the shape of the particle that you consider. So here is a note the, this is about transformations of the data, like Y, not of the model structure. So the model structure is exactly the same that we, we had before. Like for example, before we said that Y is equal to X, matrix Y is equal to matrix X times beta plus epsilon, right? So we don't, the structure of the model is exactly the same as I said. The only thing is that Y, which is observation, which is a response, right? That one is like that. Um, we just change the y in our transformation as a result of transformation. Uh, the most